I want you to not casualize the presence of God. Every time we find ourselves in an atmosphere like this, it is important that you connect. It is important that you soak in that glory. If this is all we do tonight and we return, it was worth our time. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, let your on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. Rest on me. Signs and wonders 
Rest on me, rest on me. Oh, my help has come. Oh, How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. 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 Don't miss this atmosphere. Something is resting on people in this place right now. We are not just singing. Something is resting upon you in this place. Something is resting upon you. I sense a very strong anointing. Rest on me. Rest on me. Oh, rest on me, rest on me. Sabala kebere kepalata, krata kebere te keberiata. Yes, the spirit of wisdom resting upon you. This grace called favor resting upon you. The grace for speed resting upon you. Alasha branda gabara kosi adavada kose brade. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Prophesy, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Alabashani kabaruski ata brandege balakusita. Take a minute and pray. Don't waste the atmosphere. You are receiving something within your spirit tonight. Some of you are receiving a fresh baptism of the spirit of prayer and supplication. Receiving a fresh impartation 
of the grace for visions and revelations the eyes of your understanding being enlightened some of you are receiving speed speed to your life speed to your destiny no more delay no more stagnancy Are you still praying? Don't look around. Let your eyes be on Jesus. Receive, manifest His power, His wisdom. Receive, manifest His power, His wisdom. Receive. Manifest His power, His wisdom. Receive, manifest His power, His wisdom till the nations see Jesus, till the nations. See Jesus till the nations. See Jesus till the nations. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that you will rest upon us in such a mighty way in this final service. We have come with hearts hungry and thirsty. We have come determined to receive from you. Let not one person in this place live disappointed. In the name of Jesus, even on this final night, I pray that you will do us good and be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. The Lord bless you. Please give Jesus a big hand clap and then you may be seated. John chapter 7 and verse 37. Last days are days of hunger and thirst. The Bible says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. The last days of any spiritual feast is only reserved for those who are thirsty, not those who are careless, not those who are casual, not those who are undiscerning. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must come believing, number one, that he exists, help those under the anointing, and then number two, that he's the rewarder. Not of them that carelessly seek him, not of them that passively seek him, of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. It's important for us to appreciate first and foremost the faithfulness of God over this place, over this land, over Koinonia in Zaria. And in one minute whilst you are seated, I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Let him know that we acknowledge that he has been faithful over our lives. Go ahead and thank him for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It is his faithfulness. Go ahead. Tell him thank you in one minute for sparing my life. This is where many of us started from. And today he's exalted himself in our lives. Go ahead and pray. Someone is saying thank you, Jesus. Say thank you to the lifter of men. Say thank you to the opener of closed doors. Say thank you to the one who shows men mercy. Say thank you to the one who grants men access to superior spiritual power. 
say thank you to the one who is the fountain of wisdom it is his, in his light that we see light there are things men cannot do Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher sent from God he said for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except God be with him Koinonia are you saying thank you hallelujah it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord it is a wonderful thing to acknowledge his faithfulness one of the reasons why people experience the hand of God and then for a long time they don't seem to see him manifest again is because they take his faithfulness for granted we usually become careless and casual over the workings of his hand in our midst he said if the Lord had not been on our side now may Israel say the psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. He said, I waked for the Lord sustained me. Hallelujah. And so we give God thanks for his faithfulness over our lives as a ministry and particularly here in Zaria. My final charge to us as we pray is a prophetic instruction. Most people do not understand the value of instructions. In fact, let's look at um, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. I believe it's verse 12, 2 Peter 1 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in this present truth. He says, as a faithful shepherd, I will not be negligent. That means it is carelessness to not remind God's people of the things that keep them in place, keep them in power, keep them enjoying the grace of God. Tonight, my charge to you is a repetition of the things that you have heard again and again. While I was going through my notes, just trying to piece together the things that I would share, the Spirit of God drummed this scripture, just came as a piece of it. I will not be negligent. To not put you in remembrance of these things. Because believers must be reminded. In the nation of Israel, you will find out that oftentimes Moses would put the people together and he would make them to swear and to make certain vows that they would not serve other gods and he would build a monument. He would put something there that would remind them. And he would say, if your children ask you, why are we having this feast? Or why are we observing this? Then you would tell them, it is on account of this and that that the Lord did. It is a terrible thing to forget the faithfulness of God. It is a terrible thing to forget his ways. Because the secret of the glory of God is the knowledge of his ways. The knowledge of his patterns. The secret to accessing and manifesting the glory of God in the life of any individual. Listen to me. The secret lies in number one knowing his ways understanding and engaging his patterns you want to see the glory of God in your life you must find his ways and then you must find his patterns that should be Exodus 33 I believe verse 15 please give it to us Exodus 33 and he said verse 13 let's go to 13 then we'll jump to 18 now therefore i pray thee moses is speaking now if i have found grace in your sight show me now thy way that was his first request by the time we go to verse 18 he now says show me your glory so the glory of god is connected to the knowledge of his ways if you do not know the ways of god you cannot experience his glory leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 he says, this is the thing that the Lord commanded that ye should do. And then the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. It is always there. The whole earth is already filled with his glory. But the knowledge of it, the visible manifestation of that glory comes on account of knowing what to do. Hallelujah. I want to give you a few instructions prophetic instructions are very powerful i think it was god's servant bishop oyedipo that said that um we walk 
by common sense. We run by principles. But he said we fly by instructions. You do not call a pilot a driver. A pilot is called a pilot and then those who work within the that operate the aircraft and those who train the pilots they are called instructors that means it takes instructions in righteousness for men to fly to access the height in life and destiny that should be proverbs 1 i think verse 7 give it to us please the bible says fools despise wisdom and instructions yeah the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools Fools here, not just being an insult on a person, is a description of an individual who is not interested in knowledge, is not interested in advancement. There are two things that makes an individual foolish. One, the absence of wisdom. Number two, the absence of prophetic instructions. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. I want to give you as a charge a few things that I've shared with you every once and again, but I want to repeat them again. These are my final instructions for us as we prepare to wrap up for this year. God has been faithful, but it's important for you to know that all we have enjoyed in this year of open door, the year of open doors has happened, number one, on account of God's grace. But then the grace has been activated and enjoyed upon the strength of light. Hallelujah. The first instruction I want to give you is found in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. That you must give yourself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Please write it down. You must give yourself continually, not occasionally. You must give yourself. Hallelujah. For many believers, the reason why their spiritual lives remain robust and strong is because they are part of a community of believers together. Are we together now? And that helps them. Perhaps you are in the prayer department or you are in whatever department. And because of that, you know, it's helped to stabilize your prayer life. But now many of us are going back to our various homes and various stations. And for some of us in truth, we are the most spiritual persons as far as our family is concerned, you must make up your mind as a covenant that I will give myself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Not to prayer alone and not to the ministry of the word alone. When you study scripture, prayer and the ministry of the word have never been separated. If at all they are isolated, it's because the apostles who want to teach the people. Are we together now? Yes, you are never given the liberty to choose a rich prayer life at the expense of your, your light or to choose the word at the expense of your prayer. It's a mistake that many people, especially younger believers, are making. So there are those who choose the word of God. They have no regard whatsoever for prayer. They do not believe in the power of prayer as a strategy. Strategic um, spiritual principle for their building, their rising, their making, their becoming, and yet they have abundance of knowledge. But the power of performance is bankrupt in their lives because even though they have light, it is not activated through the ministry of prayer. And then there are those who are people of prayer. They can pray and they can fast, but their lives hardly command any results. Because what gives value to your prayer is its word compliancy. Not just the time that is spent in prayer, not just the energy that is dissipated in prayer. There is such a thing as praying amiss. That an individual can pray sincerely, but you are praying amiss. Like a student writes exams, he answered the questions, but he can still score F. He was there at the exam hall. He wrote, but what he wrote was inconsistent with the true answers. So you must give yourself to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. 
is a charge. So I have no time to teach extensively on this. We've done a lot of teachings. I have tried as much as possible to bring this balance to the body of Christ. When you exalt prayer and ignore the word, you are going to get into a lot of error because subjecting yourself to extensive periods of prayer will activate your organs in the spirit and you will be exposed to all kinds of spirits. It is your knowledge of the word that gives you stability and helps you to navigate the realm of the spirit without delving into error. People who give themselves to prayer and ignore the word of God will not know who is speaking eventually. Whether it is a familiar spirit, the Holy Spirit can begin that journey with you. But familiar spirits can take advantage of your yieldedness without soundness in scripture. And now begin to introduce you to many things within your prayer space. That at the end of it you will see that who you are becoming is not Jesus again. There are people who began to submit themselves to prayer, ignoring scripture, and they end up in the psychiatry in the hospital because they dissipated energy praying until they interacted. It is a risk to give yourself to prayer and ignore the word. Hallelujah. The house of God is called the house of prayer for all nations, but the owner of the house is called the word. So if the owner of the house calls himself the word, you must respect the name that he gives himself and then respect the operations that happen within there. Then there are people who love the word of God and ignore the ministry of prayer. You will hear a lot of sound teaching, but that penetrating power that should be built from the place of prayer is not there. So what they are saying is true, but you wonder why people are not changed by it. The information is not error. Intelligence, but you can see that there is a blockade in the spirit. That information does not pass. It cannot open the gate, the gate of the intellect that opens a man to the doors of his spirit. You sit down in that atmosphere. You are agreeing that what they are saying is the truth, but why it cannot change you, you cannot understand because there is a combination that happens in the realm of the spirit. When you are sound in scripture and it is backed up by a rich prayer altar, the difference becomes clear in your life. Are we learning now? Yes. There are some of us during this break, you should take the time to go and buy books and settle down and read because your prayer life on a scale of 1 to 10 is commendably 7, but your word life is almost 0. So when people go to pray, they pray all kinds of things and you find out that there is no energy. And there are those who have given themselves to study of scripture. They will quote any scripture available, but there is no power. I adjure you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says this. And these spirits watch with no regard and no respect whatsoever. The kingdom system was designed to work on the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Are we together? But we will give ourselves continually. This is the apostolic model that was handed over to the church. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Are we learning now? Discipline yourself to pray. Discipline yourself to study the word. Do not get so excited about the merriments that happen that you ignore your prayer life. You ignore your word study life. It takes time to grow in prayer. It takes time to grow in the word. Both of them need time. They are profitable for your destiny. And so my first prophetic instruction to you here and extends to our global family is that you use this opportunity to submit yourself to the word and to prayer. Number two. The second area that has been a concern for me and many believers have not paid attention to that area and I want to give you as a prophetic instruction is return after today and begin to invest in your health and your well-being. Write it down. You would think this should not be taught in church. 
That is why believers are dying without explanation. Listen carefully. Invest in your health and your well-being. Some of the most careless sets of people health-wise are believers. Simply because of advantages like the miracle working power of Jesus. Because of advantages like the healing anointing. Many believers have become careless over their health. That includes Christian leaders. And it's affected many, many people. You've heard my story. It's not that I particularly had any sickness or any infirmity. But I, usually when I have my retreats, I gauge my life across a number of indices. And I've taught you. And I found out for three years in a row, the worst performing area of my life in terms of my intentional investment was my health. Because of the nature of my work, there was no, and it, it was not lack of finances, it was just lack of interest. Perhaps because of that press for spirituality, I didn't come to terms with the fact that I needed to take my health and my well-being seriously. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit gave me deliverance that night with one scripture. A body has thou prepared for me. This body must be prepared to host your spirit. Are we together? It is your responsibility. You can change clothes. If, my, if this cloth gets torn or old, I can throw it away and bring another one. Am I right on that? Ladies, you can change your hair. If you don't like the one you are wearing, you can throw it away, put another one. Gentlemen, you can barb your hair and then another one, hair will grow again. But this body you are given is the only one you will ever have in your lifetime. Are we learning now? Every human being is only given the gift of one body per lifetime. Lifetime is the time period between the moment you are born and the day your body can no longer take your spirit or the day your assignment is over or the day you are killed by ignorance. In any case, whatever brings a separation between your body and your spirit, whether prepared or not, brings the frame of your lifetime. There are many believers who are careless. I made up my mind at that point that I will pay attention to the things that get into this body. Then the Bible now tells you that your body, not just your spirit, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are many people, by the time you are moving into a new house, sometimes you insist that the landlord has to fix a few things to make sure the house is conducive. Are we together? You check whether the toilets are working. You check whether the kitchen water is flowing. And then when that is done, you can pay and then move in. We do that to structures that can be demolished within minutes. How much more your body? Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, one of the ways you choose life is to live healthy. One of the ways you choose life is to live healthy. Take this as a prophetic instruction. I'm going to minister to the sick. I'll speak over your lives. But there is nothing wrong with some of you going to do a complete medical checkup. Do you know that doctors tell us that most people who begin to have sicknesses from age 40 down to 50, most of those infirmities started within their 20s. They ignored it because they still had energy to run around and jump around. It's the same carelessness we use for vehicles in Nigeria. A car can break down, you are driving and the exhaust is rolling on the ground. Provided it is moving, we just continue until the day it burns the owner and kills him there. And then so many people start saying things like Hakanea la Shiria and so on and so forth. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to invest in my health. For some of you, the meaning of that is that you need to go and review what you eat. For some of you, the meaning of that is that you need to go back. And you know, thank God that God is helping to bring this balance to the body of Christ. For some strange reason, there arose a thought, especially among the Pentecostal charismatic circles, that once you are becoming spiritual, ignore medicine, ignore doctors. The moment you ignore medicine and doctors is a sign that the divine life is at work in you. I do not agree. 
there is a higher realm where you can live without those things but our growth is gradual are we together people grow into these realities that is the ideal that is God's standard for us that we get to a point where your body is so immune you do not even need to be a victim of all of these things but until we get into that experience we are changed and while that process is on God kept medicine to midwife as an instrument of his mercy while we grow imagine if they were not doctors you know how many women would have died with their children you know how many troubles would have come there are people who have attained that state in the spirit where they have been able to master keeping their bodies healthy by the spirit but it is a process and god is loving enough to allow everybody grow gradually are we together now so do not think it is unspiritual if you find yourself in a hospital you say ah, i'm the leader of my prayer group what will my people do if they see me here they say ah, mog you are here too to collect injection take away all that, that ignorant talk and take responsibility over your body say amen You stand for no reason and your nose is bleeding and you just clean it and ignore it. No. Should your nose bleed without cause? You pray, you release your faith, you speak the word and then it continues. Take responsibility. Doctor, please, I may want you to look at this. What could be the cause? And they examine you and save your life over something that will grow out of carelessness until it destroys you. For you to humble yourself and treat yourself, remain healthy and keep blessing those who need you. Or stand back in arrogance and die and then you rob the world of a gift of you. Which one is wiser? Are we together now? So Koinonia, listen to me. Use this one month, four days or thereabout and go and see a doctor. You are feeling pains all around your body. You have prayed. You've done the best. Let them check you what is wrong. I hope you like what you're hearing. It's not a sermon. It's a prophetic instruction. Go and treat yourself. Even if you want to release your faith, let medicine help you diagnose what is wrong. Then you can now release your faith. I, I, I've, I've taught you that one of the laws of faith is that faith operates with vision. Whatsoever things ye desire, you must zoom down on what you are trusting God for. Are we together? Oh, I've been told that I have a condition and that this condition is incurable now the doctors have confirmed it you can now bring it when i say i want to pray for the sick now you don't just lay your hands any part of your body carelessly vision guides you you know where the anointing the power of god should go to are we together when jesus met blind Bartimaeus, he said what should i do for you maybe the guy was blind i believe that that was just the highest problem but not the only problem a blind man who has been sitting down there must have other health concerns too but his priority was to receive his sight are we together now yes it's important for you to take responsibility over your health i made up my mind that this body as my commitment to living long i will not be careless over my body do you know for not drinking sufficient water alone, you can die? I know you don't believe that till you die. You won't die in Jesus' name. Believers are careless and they like testing things until they die. There is something in the Bible called the death of a fool. Water, just the absence of water. It's not lack of finances. It's not lack of a fridge. It's not lack, it's just sheer carelessness. People go to the restaurant and all that is in front of them, there is no water there. And you know, sometimes, especially when we come from backgrounds of deprivation and suffering, by the time God begins to help you, that pressure to show that you have arrived. So you buy malt, you buy um, some kind of drink, Coca-Cola, and you buy whatever, three or four wraps of, of food and the soup, and everything and you eat everything there and you don't walk to justify it there is a health advice in the bible he that does not walk should not eat it's, it's an instruction to help your health if you plan to be lazy he's saying don't eat because if you eat without walking it will do something to your body so you you gauge the kind of work you are doing first to control what you eat 
is a very powerful health advice because every time you keep eating without using the energy the body i'm not a medical doctor but doctors will tell you it is part of the things that cause a lot of problems for people please pay attention to your health this pounding headache that is coming here and there see a doctor what is wrong i'm going to pray for you are we together now yes this situation you've been having just like that what could be wrong do you know for someone just a supplement can be the miracle that rewrites everything in your life supplement one good quality supplement I'm saying it so that you will know this is coming from a man of God who works in the healing anointing so you listen very carefully take responsibility say I shall not die let the devil hear it say I shall not die but live but you know there is a way you can live that is better to even be dead because every part of you is so deteriorated that you will pray for death so while you are saying I shall not die you will change it now to but live in health. Not just but live. Say I shall not die. But live in health. And walk in health. And remain in health. One more time. Say I shall not die. But live in health. And walk in health. And remain in health. Don't be 27, 31, 35, 40. And you are looking as if you've given birth to the whole world. And the whole burden of the whole world is on you. Stand up. It's taking you almost one hour. Parents and grandparents jump up with energy. And you see young people just standing and stretching. You get up in the morning. You struggle for 30 minutes before you get up from the bed. Come on. And you want to be a man of God. You even want to be a general overseer. No. No. This thing requires energy. It requires energy. So go and pay attention to your health. Maybe this is even a business idea God is giving someone now. Go and start making smoothies. Huh? Ladies. Package it well. Don't serve it as if you are, you are, you are package it with excellence. And let people have something that can begin to help them. The wellness industry is much needed even within this end time. I'm saying it again, you will not die. Everyone here today, by next year, you are returning. You are returning in health. You are returning with joy. We will never need to come to the hospital to come and visit you. I'm prophesying to you, if you like, receive it. If you like, don't receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again, there will be no need for us to come to the hospital to visit you. And as I'm speaking already, any devil that is in your body that has not been planted by my God, whether it is manifesting as cancer, whether it is manifesting as, as whatever kind of satanic thing, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this moment in this atmosphere, I cause that sickness forever. I cause that sickness forever. I cause that sickness forever. And for some of you who have these sicknesses, as patterns within your family that you see mama had it your father had it your siblings had it in the name of Jesus from this night let it be minus you please be seated so first instruction is to commit yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer second instruction invest in your health number three the third prophetic instruction that I'm giving you now is make new quality and godly friends hmm. make new quality and godly friends edit your relationships there are people let this be the last time they will be in your life yes sir they deserve to receive a goodbye based on the antecedents of their making you an evil person they deserve this is not about being good or bad this is about your determination to go forward did you hear what i said you've heard me in my teaching if there are five foolish people around you you did not count well there are six people and if there are five wise people around you you did not count well you will always be a reflection of the company you keep and never say it does not matter 
it is relationship that takes people to heaven it is relationship that takes people to hell it is that important everybody who is in heaven today got there as we know from scripture because of their decision to receive the life of Jesus their decision to take their relationship with him seriously hallelujah he that walks with the wise the Bible says shall be wise himself but it says a companion of fools shall be destroyed there are many of you who love the Lord but you are the most serious person in your company your company is full of drunkards unserious people now don't hate on anybody but it's important to love your future too much to not be derailed by careless people and visionless people around you just when you want to study here they come distracting you again they have no respect for the future you are building they have no respect for the destinies connected to your life they have no respect for what God is making out of you they have no regard for your becoming it is time for you to make new friends if you do not have good friends let me tell you how to make good new friends number one pray number two become one who can attract such people to yourself you cannot be a bad person and pray that God should bring good people that's unfair why will somebody come and love something that you hate it's important that you learn to be friendly that means learn to be cautious that means learn to be selfless there are many people the reason why you do not have good quality friends is because your whole world is about you about you everything must be about you it is what I want the way I want alone any other person can go places no it doesn't work that way he that wants friends must show himself friendly you will always attract to your life people and things that are a reflection of who you are are we together now if you keep attracting to your life very bad negative destiny destroying people you are most likely like that there are many of you here it is bad people that like you and look for you let me tell you the truth beyond prayer change yourself you may need to change your lifestyle you are living a lifestyle that drives wise people from your life and tells foolish people I am available do you know that there is a lifestyle that only attracts wicked people only attracts people with curses and all kinds of things it is true there are certain ladies when you see you can almost know that no reasonable responsible gentleman who places value on his destiny will come near that sister because she carries a personal and a manifestation of an unserious person and nobody wants to come and join himself to the life of a minus there are gentlemen when you see you know already that this gentleman is not going anywhere are we together now and sometimes in truth it may not be so the people may even be visionary people but you have given yourself an appearance that becomes fair enough to conclude on you receive grace to be responsible shout amen receive grace to be responsible amen. hallelujah blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly nor sits in the seat of the scornful are we together now it says but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day and night as a result he shall be like a tree that is that is planted by the riverside whose leaves does not wither are we together what does it say and whatsoever he doeth prosper so be careful be careful with old classmates be careful with those who were there with you before you got born again as much as you respect people I'm not teaching you to categorize people and tear people down no but it's important that everybody around you knows that you are now changed did you hear what I'm saying it is all right that you were once Saul, but remember you are now Paul. You don't have to shout telling everybody I am Paul. There is something about the way you conduct yourself that automatically drives old people and brings in new people. Make new friends, godly friends. Apostle boy, you don't know what Christian people do. No matter what you tell me, they are better than unbelievers. Did you hear what I said? 
Don't you ever think you will find it better outside the presence of God? No. Invest in quality relationships. Some of you here, as soon as they share the grace, by the time they say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are at the door there. And yet, while you are going, it's in your heart. Oh God, let my destiny help her find me. That man you have designed for me, by going and running away like that, does it work that way? Answer me. If Esther ran away or Rebecca ran away, Isaac would never see her. Is that true? I'm not saying you stand and be telling everybody I'm here. That's not what I'm saying. Listen, 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 so you don't misunderstand me. This is a prophetic church, please. There's something about friendliness. Turn to your neighbor and say, God bless you. And someone turns and regrets talking to you because you make the person feel stupid in the house of God. And the person marks you. And maybe it's his friend that likes you. And he advises the friend and says, come and sit down. I love you. You are my friend. I had an experience with this brother and this sister. Please, let's pray again. Say amen. amen. Be friendly. Be friendly. I have taught you these things. Learn to use these miracle words that express love. Thank you. God bless you. You see, remember? Or oh, you've forgotten. Let's do a quick rehearsal. Say thank you. Thank you. One more time. Again. For the last time. Thank Say please. please. One more time. Please. Again. Please. For the last time. Please. Say God bless you. One more time. One more time. Say, I'm sorry. One more time. Thank you. God bless you. Don't speak like where you are coming from. Speak like you have met Jesus Christ. Must we say you are coming from a village? Is it a cost to come from a village? Answer me, Koinonia. Behave like a Christian speak to people you are in church and somebody turns please you, you do you know God I'm, beyond even the issue of marriage you can meet destiny helpers someone can look at you and because of good behavior the person is already seen a secretary the secretary that is looking for and without any application some of you have not said thank you people do nice things to you in your department in the house here Perhaps someone vacated a seat for you. Just said, eh, and sat on it. Please change. You will not get friends like that. I hope you are learning. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, God bless you. Tell them, thank you. Tell them, please. Say, I'm sorry. Your ego now will be strong for what? Say, I'm sorry. But. You know, we come from different backgrounds and some of us are still carrying Egypt. It took them one day. Listen, Koinonia, let me have your attention. It took them one day to come out of Egypt, but they were still carrying Egypt. When there was trouble, they began to reminisce on the mindset of Egypt. Can I tell you, transformation does not happen in one day. Did you hear what I said? transformation does not happen in one day that means don't be discouraged if you are not yet there but you must keep pressing to become some of you will go home and greet your dad and for the first time your father will be shocked who preached to you like this because they know you to be when you tell them you are coming home your own biological parents are afraid because they don't know who you you'll be they know you are there because of how you kick the door you don't open it with your hand and you have koinonia sticker or Jesus revealed on your shirt and you are behaving anyhow <laughs> are we learning you open everybody's door without knocking you don't care you sit down to eat with several people and they say oh you are the man of God pray for us plus Jesus minus and you start eating I hope you are not just laughing these are instructions that culture believers to become responsible people. Let your loved ones see the value of your loving Jesus. Don't just, don't just say, I am a child of God and there is nothing in your life that shows. Your life should be cultured. You behave well. 
you speak well they bring you a gift ah thank you so much those of you who are students you go home put your parents together and sit down and say daddy mommy please i have something to say we were taught in koinonia and i want to act out something we've been taught i just want to say thank you for paying my school fees even if you think you don't need their money now you needed it before you can change the future but you cannot change history thank them for yesterday and don't go empty-handed i've taught you get 1000 naira get a, a oranges or banana whatever or a bottle of wine yes your parents it is hypocrisy if you do it to me and you do not do it to them did you hear what i said some of you can stand before me with anything if you can even use handkerchief to clean my shoe that is not dirty your parents that are at home you approach them and you are waiting for what they will give you please let there be a change as you go let them know and for those of you who have not seen your parents in a long time i don't care how much of an adult you are hear me go home did you hear what i said go home go and see them because many of those parents you see very soon you will not see them again i'm not a bearer of bad news if you see your parents only once in two years and they have 10 more years to live it means that there are five more contacts with them and they will go to heaven except there is a reason that you cannot go and where you cannot go send them something that makes them know let their heart be at peace that god gave them a gift in a child are you going to do that you try it and come and thank me by january don't be online buying things and and doing this and your parents are there suffering some of your loved ones are in the village they can barely eat and yet you see their children all over social media space wearing all kinds of things no by the time your life gets into trouble all the psychophants who are hailing you they will say crucify him it is these same people who say there's nothing we can do we love you whether it works or it does not work one of the things I'm hoping that you will learn now and learn next year is compartmentalize your relationships. Not everybody thinks you are a big deal. Respect those who know your nonsense and still love you. Respect those who have seen the good and the bad and the ugly and love you with all their heart. And among many of these kinds of people, your family is most likely the people that fit that description. Don't generalize relationships. Don't put Judas and Peter in the same place. Don't put Thomas and Peter in the same place. Don't put Judas and John in the same category. That is not wisdom. Everybody cannot hold the same position in your heart. No. There are those who will run away in the place of pain. There are those who will run away the day the burden is on them. But there are those who will stay. Even Jesus showed that difference. Are we together now? So the third instruction, invest and make sure you invest in quality relationships. Build relationships with your family members. Some of you may need to go back and tell certain people, I'm sorry, like I taught you. You have insulted your parents. And the truth is that some of them, their cause and their ill speakings are on your head right now. Maybe you acted when you were not born again. Now you are saved. Don't let them die without making peace. Go and tell them, Daddy, I'm sorry. I was angry. Now I'm a child of God. And I want you to know that I'm sorry. Can I give you number four? Number four. Ensure that you go for an end of year retreat. Please write it down. Ensure that you go for an end of year retreat an end of year retreat i'm not going to talk much about this because um i want us to have the time to just pray and then we depart on time but it's important i have taught you koinonia you know what a retreat is please look up let me have your attention a retreat is a moment set aside to seek the face of god a retreat is a moment set aside to appraise your life a moment set aside to seek the face of God. A moment set aside to appraise your life, appraise your destiny. 
a moment set aside to make new world compliant resolutions that move your destiny forward. I honestly do not know anybody who makes consistent progress and does not practice retreats. That includes believers and unbelievers. They just call it different things. But it is still a retreat. One of the factors that keep people floating and rising and thriving in life and in this kingdom is when they master the art of drawing back and staying. One of the major reasons why as a ministry, a man of God once asked me a question and said, Apostle, you are an interesting person. How does a ministry this size go on break? What if you resume and the people don't come back? You know, he was just being sincere. I mean, how does God honor you with such great people and then you give a global break as a ministry? That means from today, Friday, in Koinonia Zaria, you're on break until I would tell you the date we're resuming. And the same thing will happen on Sunday in Abuja and we shut down. Only the online expression continues. But everyone is going. Do you know why? It is my commitment. It's a strategy God gave and we've kept it for a long time. So that three things will not be missing in your life. Number one is your own life. Number two, God, the God factor. Number three, family. That is the purpose of our giving this break. That within this one month, because you spend the whole year walking, traveling, stretching yourself, there are people who have done church at the expense of their family, church at the expense of their rising, church at the expense of several other things. We believe in holistic development in this ministry. And this is the reason why we're going on break. So that you use that time to just rest, rejuvenate yourself, your health, use the opportunity to catch up with family, use the opportunity to build or rebuild your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ again. Go for retreats. What do you do in a retreat? Thanksgiving. What do you do in a retreat? An honest appraisal, a messless appraisal of your life. How did I live my life from January till December? If I have the opportunity to live it again, would I do the same thing I did? In the place of appraisal, there are many things you will do. Repentance. In the place of appraisal, there are many things you do. Reaffirmation of your values. In the place of, um, there are many things. That is the moment you flog it out with destiny. Oh, I was doing well up until March. Until this friend came into my life. Now, you see, because you are with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be naked and unashamed. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Naked and unashamed. You are before your king your maker and then the next thing that happens is you begin to plan for your life plan for the year coming i'm summarizing retreat for you you start retreats with thanksgiving lavish thanksgiving not five minutes thanksgiving you are not hurrying anywhere and then number two appraisals the various areas in your life appraise them on a scale of one to ten how was my prayer life on a scale of 1 to 10, my commitment to church. A scale of 1 to 10, my financial responsibility. On a scale of 1 to 10, my health, my relationships, my job, my family. And then when you are done doing that, the next thing becomes planning and resolutions. How can I be better? A better me, a better preacher, a better father, a better husband, a better mother, a better sibling, a better believer, a better head of department, a better media personnel. How can I now live my life such that yesterday never repeats itself into my today? I'm showing you how to have a profitable retreat. If you do not do this, you are not truly, truly, truly an effective believer. And if you do not do this, you are not a true son and daughter in this house. The mysterious secrets that keep men is retreat. Show me a man whose life has been damaged to whatever degree. Let him get into the presence of God. He will come out like you did not. I mean, as if he's not the person again. That washing of the word. That resolution. In his presence, you will cry sometimes. And say, Lord, this was the year I made the most careless financial mistake. 
you gave me 1 million this year. You gave me 500,000 this year. But this is the year that I wasted more than ever before. And when you want to feel condemned, the loving arm of your Savior now comes. And he says, don't worry. I am the God that will give you another chance again. But let's now begin to plan. Are we together now? Planning is very important. How will January be? How will February be? How will I design a prayer life system that makes sure that I'm on fire? Now that I'm becoming busy, how do I do this? Now that I'm a husband, now that I'm a father, the dynamics of living will change. Now that I used to have one child, now I have three children. Now I've been promoted to be a director. I don't have the kind of time I used to have five years ago. I need to reinvent my life. I used, I, the last time I had retreat, I was 20. Now I am 40, 45. Days are going. I need to rearrange my life again. For some of you, it's in the place of planning that you will now learn that this is my talking too much. I need to work on it. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Now you have attained a position of leadership where your words are now expensive. What you said yesterday and went scot free, if you say today, you will destroy many. So God begins to teach you. You see that now? Yeah. For other people, you just need to reinvent your life. Five years ago, you were not as wealthy as you are now. Five years ago, you were not a leader the way you are now. Now God has been faithful. You reinvent your life. It's in the place of planning. You now say, listen, I need to leave this one room now and get it through a three-bedroom flat. I was in that one room when I got married. Now I have three children. And the children are growing. I need to pay the price. That means a greater sense of responsibility. Can I tell you why many people fail? They don't plan. They just move around and whatever they meet, if they meet good luck, they say, thank you, Jesus. If they meet bad luck, they say, it's the devil. Most people don't plan. Hallelujah. Planning is a very important aspect. I hope you are learning this night. Insist on planning. Koinonia, insist on planning. Write it down. How much do I plan? How much do I spend every week? Some of you don't know. How much do I spend every month? Some of you don't know. Anything that enters your account, you are spending. Some of you are already living your five years now and God has been warning you and you are not listening. That's the job of a retreat. It's a moment also to plan, ask questions. Why do bad people come around my life? What drives good people from my life? Write it down. And as I'm talking of this planning, that also includes the children. Babies can be exempted. But parents and young people teach those who are under your care. If they are teenagers, if they can write letters to one another, they can plan. Hello? Yes, sir. Teach them teach them. If there is nothing to teach them, give them one verse per day. Let them get busy learning that verse while you plan. Ah. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. There are some of us is in the place of planning. You will know that God has been faithful. It's just that you've not been serious. God has been faithful. This year like never before, God opened doors. Truly. You just did not see it. This year, like never before, everything God gave you, you destroyed because you did not learn anything. Now you go back, not feeling condemned, but start again, plan again. For some of you, this year, you have to repent because you say, Father, you blessed me, but I nobody smiled this year because you lifted me. Not my parents, not my children, nobody's school fees was paid. I didn't bring smiles and joy and laughter to anybody. This year was the year of myself. It must change. Hallelujah. I never gave to the work of God. Never gave to the house of God. I kept praying that God would bring people to me. No. 
I hope you are learning. This retreat one is a very serious thing. Oh. Make resolutions. Ladies and gentlemen, make resolutions. Plan. Ask yourself questions. Be honest to answer them. And then come up with very... Generally, you see, retreat should not just happen end of the year. I've taught you. You must create, it's your, it's your prerogative to create, you are at liberty to create whatever system of retreat you want. There are people who do at least one day or a few hours every week. There are others who do it at least once, twice every month. There are those who do it every quarterly. There are those who do it when certain defining seasons are coming to their life, like birthdays. They take the first three days, maybe three days to their birthday. And they have that time. But end of year retreats because God fragmented our living according to times and seasons. Do not let new prophetic defining seasons enter your life. Let me tell you this. Maybe in the last 10, I hope I'm right. For God's sake, forgive me, oh God, if I'm wrong. 10 or 15 years, I think it's only once or twice, I did not enter the next year praying in tongues. And I remember the year, maybe two or three years ago, that was when it happened. And it was because I was counseling a few people. I didn't even know that we had entered the next year. But ethically, I enter every new year praying in the spirit. From the end, as I'm approaching the end of that year, I'm firing on all four cylinders in the spirit. By the time I enter the new year, I'm praying in the spirit, calling the months by name, and praying praying for you and i found out is a powerful spiritual uh, strategy some enter the year sleeping some enter the year drinking how can you enter a year that you have already seen what is happening around the globe and you are not spiritually minded so make this year different the prophetic word for next year will come by december December 31st, 6 p.m. Nigerian time on the dot. Go to our social media pages and the prophetic word for the next year comes. As soon as it comes, you are prepared to begin to pray. Pray it to your spirit. Declare it to your head of department. Pray it. In. See, if you don't believe these things, they will never happen to you. God is not a herbalist. By the grace of God, I'm the one who God uses to bring these prophetic words, but it is still not an excuse. When I receive it, I pray. I wish one day you can watch me when I'm praying on these prophetic words. You will think it was someone that told me. Because being that it was you that received it does not mean it will work in your life. If you don't believe it and engage it by faith, you will be surprised that God will speak through you. Others will be blessed by it. But you, the conduit, you will not be blessed by it. Hallelujah. So position your spirit. 31st December. As soon as you receive the word. Father thank you. This is true for me. You pray the scriptures. And God who sees what you are doing in secret. Will reward you openly. This is how it works. Let me give you number five. I said this one last year. And I want to repeat it again. The fifth prophetic charge that I'm giving you you must share the love of Jesus with someone be a soul winner be a blessing transform someone's life insist on sharing the love of Jesus with someone most believers do not know that we have a mandate under God to see that the nations see Jesus we sing it through our songs here yeah? But I am praying that it becomes a revelation. That Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. is not just a ministry cliche. It is a, a capture. That is what we, is why we exist. If you take that out of koinonia, then everything is just showmanship. The insistence to see Jesus revealed. The insistence to see Jesus glorified. That means for some of you here, within this one month, God is going to be giving you mini mandates. You will go to a place and you will find out that nobody is praying in your locality. And God will put a burden in your heart and say, two of you, organize one day program here. It may be a small program, 
and nobody may know you don't have to go and market it it doesn't need to have a ministry name an opportunity for Jesus to be glorified some of you may gather the children within your area and locality and with the little that you have a little gift pack for them sit them and talk to them about Jesus get them to be saved don't say they are too small you see a lady of four years and they tell you she's in the occult and the girl will tell you I've been killing people so what is small about her the love of Jesus as a ministry we continue to do our bid on Tuesday was the welfare outreach you know and the medical outreach all of these things are done to share the love of Jesus there are many more families we make sure that as much as possible we help people see and this has nothing to do with religion we bless everyone together because we let them know that we are a people of love don't go back home and be a liability to people don't go back to your station and be a liability some of you fathers you've never gathered your children let this be the opportunity that you try it and when I talk of children don't say I don't have children everybody under your care is your child take responsibility over them if you cannot manage another person's child under your care you cannot manage your own biological child too are we together gather everybody and have a Bible study with them one day and say listen all of you who are under my care we're going to study scripture today begin by asking them questions what are your plans for the next five years you hear all kinds of things there once you are done hearing say okay sit down let me teach you invest in people's minds for some of you you can put this koinonia teachings together in an mp3 and give it to someone as a gift and say my brother or select three or four messages that apply uniquely to their situation. You've seen someone confused, hustling through life, trying to make it by crook or by hook. You get teachings like lessons from an overcomer. You get teachings like what sees thou. You get teachings like the law of seasons. And you can tell that person, please, I want you to listen to this. You see someone who is acting confused. Give the person the mentality of a victor. Exceeding great and precious promises. Believers that are going through all kinds of tragedies. You don't know how to preach. Give them the teaching, the afflictions of the righteous. Let them understand that the Bible says, Count it all joy, my brethren, when you face diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. You may not be a preacher, but you can be a blessing connect people to truth help them to know help them to learn are we together now yes you can buy a bible and give someone don't go around condemning people and say this person you are a useless child you are a wayward child that's why God showed you when God shows you people's problems is because he trusts you to help them not just to talk about it and destroy them are we learning koinonia you must share the love of Jesus everybody here must do something that brings glory to the name of the Lord something that brings glory to the name of the Lord for some of you it will manifest in giving God has given you the financial capacity why not if you buy one bag of rice and share it to the people around your community and just tell them this is with love from Jesus Christ through me just for you to know for some of you you may not have that but if you gather three young men that you see the potential in them that these three gentlemen will most likely be men of God in the future and you gather them and you use your one month stay with them and say you know what we're going to have one hour every day for one week that is my commitment to you I want to teach you certain things put your life in order you must share the love of Jesus with everybody around you everybody around you they must know you are a child of God they must know you are a Christian are we together you must do something for Jesus do you know ladies and gentlemen one day we will all stand before this Jesus we're talking about and I'm praying for you that the day you stand there you will not be ashamed because it will be that okay now that you were saved what did you do with the grace I gave you what did you do with the anointing I gave you? What did you do with the wisdom I gave you? And you say, oh Lord, I was focused on myself. All I wanted was my job. All I wanted was increase, promotion. You will get that. They are called his benefits. 
But you see, the purpose of the privileges in the kingdom is so that they can give us the comfort and the liberty to serve him. If you are not serving Jesus, even if you are coming to church, you are not an effective Christian. To serve Jesus does not just mean to preach. To serve Jesus means that everything that will help the nations to see him revealed and glorified, that is within your capacity, you become an active participant to making that happen. Is it your seed? Why not? Is it your prayer? Why not? Is it sharing the love of Jesus? Why not? Is it wiping the tears of someone? Why not? Is it being a, a midwifing someone in the midst of their pain? Why not? Is it rebuking and correcting someone in righteousness to, to square up their lives? Why not? There is always something you can do. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you right now so that you don't sit down and wait for people to keep giving you things. From January till December, week in, week out, you have received the word of God. Don't waste the anointing you have received. You did not fall down and stand up for nothing. There are some of you, you fall down for every service and yes, you have not used that anointing. Every time you fall under the anointing and stand up, you should ask yourself, what happened? Huh? What happened? So God just wanted to throw you down? No. There were transactions in the spirit. When you stand up, oh, something has come upon my life. One of the ways that you stir up increase is by use. Every time you use what God gives you, you qualify for increase. There is no reason why you experience increase if you are not using what God has given you. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Now, before I give you some other instructions, I made up my mind that we're going to close early tonight because of the weather and then because we're doing this outside but right now before I continue I want to do an altar call now listen ladies and gentlemen this issue of altar call there are many people who have been joking around it when God begins to speak pe to people about their lives do you know there are many believers as a preacher is shouting like I'm saying now on stage the spirit of the living God is convicting them and telling them this man of God is speaking about you and yet they don't care it doesn't matter it does it does you cannot continue to live your life the way you are living ignoring Jesus ignoring purpose ignoring value and expect that your world will celebrate you tonight in this place and all the overflows and those following online I know that there are many people who are saying apostle Listening to you speak, the Spirit of God began to convict me that I need to make it right with Jesus. I don't care how many times you've been around church. No, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking for a functional relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't tell me I've been around church. Don't tell me I have a Christian name. Wonderful as that is, you need to be born again. You need to know Jesus. You need to consciously receive him as Lord and Savior and then number two there are those that as I was saying all these things it was as if I was doing a checklist on you and based on your scorecard it is complete zero because in truth not to condemn you you have wasted your moment your life your days and you are saying I need to get my life fixed again what's that your song my dear K strings <laughs> And 
We'll sing it one more time, then I begin to count. You're saying, Apostle, and hearing you speak, the Holy Spirit is talking to me. God is reaching His loving hands to someone right now in this final service and saying, I want to give you a chance. Don't look at yesterday. It doesn't matter what has happened or not happened. You can make a decision tonight, right now, and say enough is enough. Now is the time to begin to love Jesus. Now is the time to become a superior version of myself. I'm going to count one to five. Whether in this auditorium, this, this outside of overflow three, or around the auditorium there, or all the overflows, as I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat. I will allow you to come to the front here here the green area here or any of those places just or you can come walk around to the front here as i count one to five make sure you don't sit back when you know the lord is asking you to come and for those who are in the overflows because except here is full i want all of them to come to this the overflow three here where we're using i want them to come allow them if they are coming if it gets filled then they can move to their screens i'm counting one to five and make sure you don't wait for someone to be the first. This is a personal affair with the Lord. Are you ready now? One. Two. Come. Come. Let's celebrate them. Keep coming. Yarani, my king, Yarani, run to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh. more time from the depth of your heart Listen to me. This is one of the reasons why we chose to hold these services at the overflow here. Because it was my prayer and my plea to God that we present a harvest of souls unto Jesus as that one gift as we wrap up the service for the year. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me. There comes a time in every man's life where you are given the liberty to choose between Jesus and with Jesus' grace, 
with Jesus wisdom with Jesus a better tomorrow or you ignore Jesus and make up your mind that I will live my life nobody will force you you see this is the wonderful thing there are people who woke up on earth today but right now as I speak to you they are in hell do you know why they use their will to reject Jesus and God respected it you are coming out here because number one the Lord Jesus Christ brought you out here but you are coming out here to say Lord I cannot help myself I cannot help myself I've tried and tried and tried sing it for me this is the life that Jesus wants to give you and for many of you who are here if you will you can come out here and not be saved because you just came as a ritual but I want you to mean it from your heart are we together I'm going to lead you to pray for my little children here look listen to me you are coming to Jesus you are not too small to start afresh with Jesus lift your right hand all of you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus please say after me as loud as you can and mean it from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for me this night I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God and I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands lifted father thank you for these lovely people young and old male and female mothers children senior colleagues contemporaries all together they have come standing before you to declare your lordship over their lives I thank you oh God for bringing this many to yourself and then I pray oh God in the name of Jesus that as a result of these declarations of faith I declare that their sins are truly forgiven in Jesus name and I pray for you that the life of God rests in your inside and you begin to live a victorious Christian life from, from today. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life and I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you keep going from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, there are a number of you here and usually what we do is that when we make the altar call and people come out I'm going to ask all of you um, let someone stand here and here so that we don't congest the space now all of you are going to turn just behind me you will see the counselors they're waving their hands those who are here you can just turn right there those who are here you can just turn back they will have a word with you please cooperate with them they will receive your details just have a word with you so that we can follow up on you and ensure that you are grounded in truth. Let's give them a big God bless you as they go. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them. Now we're ready to pray. 
Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo, Dideo. Oh God of signs oh God and of wonders, signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo. One more time, oh God of signs oh God and of wonders, and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest. Your power, the Shout this loud from your spirit. Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. Tonight, I place a demand on your grace. All that is required to finish the year well, I receive right now. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Ahead and pray. I place a demand upon your grace. All that is required to end 2023 with grace, with glory, with power. I receive, I receive. Someone is praying. All that is required. All that is required. Say after me, Father. One more time, say, Father. Every door that is yet to be opened, I decree and declare, let it be opened now. Go ahead and pray. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They sang, and the jailers heard them. Suddenly, there was a sound and the prison foundations were shaken and all doors opened. Go ahead and pray. Every door that is left to be opened, let it be opened now. 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 Let it be open now. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed, Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed,
I like you to pray. I'm about to speak over your life now. Everything that is yet to crown my year with glory and honor, I place a demand. There are still a few days before the year is done. Come on, go ahead and pray. In one moment, God can crown your year. In one moment, he can take away shame. In one moment, he can take away disappointment. Listen, listen, in one moment, you can find your destiny helper. In one moment, it does not take long for doors to open. In one moment. Don't say it's too late. No. In the final service, someone has to receive. You can make that someone you. Are we together now? In one moment, that what I could not get from January till November, my God, I sense such an anointing in this place. In one moment, I'm going to give you a minute to still pray. Place a demand. Father, this is the final service. What you told me in January, the realm that you said I would be walking in, I am yet to see it manifest. I place a demand. I place a demand on your grace by faith. God can turn your finances within the days that are left. Not weeks, not months. Days that are left. In one day, God can rewrite the story of your family. In one day, God can redefine your life again. Hallelujah. 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 Why do we take our time to pray and speak over people? Because you see, prophecy is very powerful. Impartation is not just about falling down. I have taught you this. Impartation is about opening up your spirit to access the graces that empower you to rise, to thrive, to excel. We are made by the graces that rest upon us. This is what makes men. Hallelujah. So as I speak over your life, don't just shout amen. Say it with understanding. Because these words are spirit and life. God confirmed the words of his messengers. They are not empty words. But it is only to the believer. This is how it works in the kingdom. It is only to the believer. It is only to the believer. There is a gentleman now. I'm seeing fire fall on that gentleman. A gentleman. Gentleman. You will be a mighty man in the spirit. Mighty man in the spirit. Do not despise the training of the spirit with you. You will be a mighty man. I'm telling you this by the spirit. You will be, you will command power in the spirit. In the spirit power in the spirit power I will sing of the wonders of your work I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your work I will sing of the wonders of your work. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your work. And I will forever sing your praise. And I will 
forever sing your praise and I will forever sing your praise I'm praying for you now the grace that makes you a man of prayer the grace that makes you pray even in the spirit the grace that makes you travel till you become by prayer I stretch my hands over you in the name of Jesus let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now just help those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out just just guide them where they are I'm saying it again there is a grace that quickens men to pray may that grace like never before let it rest upon you now help them please let the, let that grace rest upon you now number two I truly want to pray for your understanding of scripture please hold on mommy the spirit of revelation there are not many people that have carried this grace I don't know why you see let me tell you revelation is not just a reality you step into there is an operation of the Holy Spirit that actually opens you it brings you to a realm of enlightenment you become knowledgeable precise accurate spiritual information with the results that follow I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus everyone that must drink of this fountain everyone that must drink of this grace access to the mysteries of the kingdom light I stretch my hands let it rest on you now let it rest on you now let it rest on you now let it change the way you see let it change the way you see let it change the way you perceive let it change the way you receive in the name of Jesus Christ Rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, oh, oh, rest on me. This is what you are about to receive. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to use the written word and with it provide solutions. Translating the word of God, giving it application to your life and destiny. Knowledge is good, but knowledge is not enough. If it does not translate to wisdom, it says to the Greeks that Christ, the power of God, the anointing revealed as the wisdom of God, and as the power of God, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Wisdom that will distinguish you. Wisdom that will set you apart. It will become clear that you are a carrier of wisdom. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Young and old, male and female, let it rest upon you now. Let it change your ministry. Let it change your finances. Let it change your life. Let it change your approach to things. With wisdom, let it come excellence. Excellence upon you. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power, let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power let your power for signs and wonders rest on me
I want to pray for you. Perhaps this may not be for everybody, but there are people who need to carry an authentic anointing, truly, for signs and wonders. You cannot demonstrate the reality of the life and the power of God, except power comes upon you. I know what power can do. I'm praying for someone now, a lady, a gentleman, a Deborah, an Elijah. I don't know who must drink of this, that you go back and begin to command a strange order of the miraculous. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release that grace upon you. With it, you will pray for the sick and watch them healed. With it, you will speak over people and watch doors of families open. Receive the grace for signs and wonders. I, I release it upon you from the depth of my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me. One more time. Me. Let your power, let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Listen, hear me. Truly, there is the power to prosper. Honestly, if you have never believed anything about scripture, believe this one. There is, there is a real dimension in the spirit called the power to prosper. If it is not on you, it will be clear that it's not on you. There are many things, listen, the power to prosper is not about money. Don't mistake in it. The power to prosper has nothing to do with finances. It only reflects itself in finances. The power to prosper stops things from dying in your hands. The power to prosper is what is responsible for advancement. It makes everything to produce. He shall be like a tree that is planted. Our, the mistake is that every time we say power to prosper, we are thinking Naira and Kobo. No. There are people who have money without the power to prosper. When the power to prosper is upon you, nothing dies. You become Beulah and Hepzibah, a well-watered garden. I want to pray for someone. This is the cure to struggling. I'm coming to favor, but many of you, but even if in your, listen, if your finance is not working, the power to prosper, I have taught this and I want you to listen so you don't just shout amen. I hope I'm not wasting your time. There are three dimensions of the operation of the power to prosper. Watch this now. Number one, when the power to prosper comes upon you, it comes upon your head. That is the first place it comes to. It does something to your thinking and your understanding. The power to prosper does not just give. It adjusts, it realigns. When the authentic power to prosper does not come to your bank account, it comes to your mind. Job said in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, there were two kinds of light. The lights that shined upon his head and the lights that shined upon his feet. It is the power to prosper that works upon your mind. It heightens your level of intelligence, your acumen, your understanding of things. You begin to comprehend things in an unusual dimension. It is that dimension that fishes out solutions in darkness. That is what gives you the treasures that are hidden in dark places. Hmm. I want you to believe what you are hearing. I know what I'm talking about oh, when it has to do with this one. This is not a lecture. The power to prosper. Many people do not have it. And so you find out that only one little thing seems to be working. And everything is dead around their lives. Just because you have money does not mean you have the power to prosper. The power to prosper has nothing to do with material things. It only commands material things. Hallelujah. Your mind. The second area where it functions is your hands representing productivity. You can have creative ideas, but the fortitude to execute them, to now turn them into solutions, 
that schedule rewards for you many do not have it the power to prosper comes upon your mind then your hands and then the third dimension is your feet representing guidance and direction when the power to prosper rests upon your life it begins to culture your work so that you go to the right places influenced by the Spirit of God and Isaac sowed in that land the key word is not the sowing is that land if he left that place you see it is the power to prosper that can make you to know that the season has ended in a place it is a power to prosper it has the assignment of insisting that you move forward it has the assignment of seeing that you excel whatsoever he doeth prospers that is the assignment many of you are just learning about the power to prosper now because every time we talk about the power to prosper people are thinking their bank account their atm it works there but that is the latter part of the power to prosper you can have money by going to school and getting a job and get something coming when the power to prosper brings you finances the difference will be clear you can get finances by many other means but if it comes by the power to prosper it is dangerously defended there is longevity do you believe what you're hearing because I'm about to release that grace on someone there are people here nothing is working in your life you are sincere you are educated you love God but you lack the power to prosper you are in ministry receive this all because it is the power to prosper that works in partnership with the grace for favor you are receiving that that brings the helpers that come to hold your hand as you serve it is the power to prosper that brings the people who need to help you in ministry the helpers of the war the power to prosper that for no reason should you fail do you believe what you're hearing father in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands over my precious people and I'm praying for someone who is thirsty desperate and hungry in a way you have not experienced before let the power to prosper truly let this grace that causes men to prosper rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it come upon your job let it come on your ministry let it come on your finances let it come on your mind let it come on your hands let it come on your feet i say it again let it come on your mind let it come on your hands let it come on your feet in the name of jesus christ that by this prophetic declaration nothing dies in your hands in the name of Jesus are you tired of receiving let's talk about favor is there such a thing as the favor of God can it rest upon men and can it be seen that a man carries the favor of God the answer is yes there is truly a grace called favor this one is what gives you dominion in the world of men the assignment of favor is not to bring things favor is directly connected with men the ministry of men resides within the jurisdiction of favor is what makes men like you expressing itself in uncommon kindness expressing itself in uncommon access are we together now on common acceptance the clearest proof of favor is the presence of men quality men to help you quality men to stand with you quality men to lift you when the favor of God is upon a man it brings struggle to an end it brings struggle to an end how do you know the favor of God is not upon you because the men who should be used by God to attend to the matters of destiny never seem to show up. You don't call them by saying come. You call them by receiving favor. Let me tell you this. If Koinonia, by the privilege of God's grace, if Koinonia did not carry this grace for favor, it would be a disaster. It would be a joke to want to rise from Zaria here to the ends of the earth. No right in this place there were people coming from all over the world america 
UK with the whole crisis terrorism and everything they would come fly from Lagos to Kaduna inconvenience themselves not have the best of hospitality but still endure that's what happens when favor is upon you favor is what gives you space and territory they got not the land in possession by their own sword by your favor favor is what stops emptiness from your hand Exodus 3 21 and I will give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty favor it compels people to want to give you some of you this is what you need to remedy for the financial calamity that right now is upon you you can learn the ways of finances properly when the pain and the trouble is gone but as per the trouble you are in now it is only the favor of God that will bail you out loneliness is one of the evidences of lack of favor no man that's what the man said Bethesda his problem was not a healing problem the water was there the power was there but he said I have no man I have no man that was his problem why are you still in this situation for 38 years when an angel comes to stir the water every year others came there and they came two days before the angel arrived and they got healed and walked away but one man remained there for 38 years and here was what he said verse 7 I have no man when the water is troubled to put me there I went to school but I have no man who will speak to me I can walk I can do the business but I have no man I'm a great anointed man of God but I have no man to help connect me to the next level let me pray for you let your grace this grace called favor rest on you rest on you let your grace called favor rest on me rest on me can i tell you this many of you have heard the great things that god is doing where family and i say these things to the glory of god I can only begin to tell you the mighty and manifold things that God is doing through this ministry. It is remarkable and tremendous. Everywhere across the globe, the favor of God, the mighty wonders of God. But this is where it started. When favor rests on you and you actually receive it, then sit back and watch how you tame life like an animal. You know how people tame horses? How people tame animals? animals that are stronger than them but they develop their mechanism you can tame life like an animal on the strength of favor in the name of Jesus let favor by the spirit of the living God upon a man upon a woman upon a man of God upon a businessman upon a career person upon a student upon a parent let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let it begin to attract quality men to your life quality relationships to your life in the name of jesus by this impartation everything that looks like reproach around your life where you are alone and men do not show up to help you i pray for you let that tragedy called ichabod in your life come to an end now hallelujah the final impartation for tonight the final impartation for tonight you're going to receive the grace called speed why do you need speed in your life because destiny is a function of time and many of us by default we are already late in life did you hear what i said by default not because you are wrong some of us got to know the lord late some of us got to go to school late some of us right now is 10 years since after graduation 20 years since after graduation you've not gotten the first job when will you be able to build a house 
when will you be able to take care of the necessities of your life with integrity and without compromise hallelujah speed is one of the spiritual systems for time redemption the Bible says, walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time. There are two principal ways in the kingdom by which we gain dominion and exact dominion over time. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. Let me focus on speed tonight. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for someone who has been laid back in life. I pray for someone who has been delayed. I pray for a family that has not, you are not at the place you should have been now. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace for speed. Receive that grace for speed. My God, receive that grace for speed. Let it rest upon you now. In one month, you will achieve things that have not been done in years. I say it in one month. You will achieve things that have not been done in years. In one month, you will achieve things that have not been done in years. In the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, hear me. As you go, carry these graces and may they speak for you. As you go, let every man who sees you on the way bless you. As you go, let every mountain that stands before you be cleared out of the way for your sake. As you go, you shall not die. As you go, you shall not want. As you go, you shall not beg. As you go, you shall not borrow. Hear me. For everyone shouting amen here, you will still shout amen next year. By the power of the prophetic and the apostolic, I shut the gates of the grave. I shut the gates of accident. I shut the gates of plane crash. In the name of Jesus. And let me speak to you. No devil anywhere will kidnap you or your children. Say amen, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every conspiracy to bring you pain during this season, I declare may you be exempted as God is touching you here may he touch your loved ones you will not hear bad news I say it again you will not hear bad news I declare health and vitality for you your body will not break down your finances will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ let's give Jesus a mighty hand clap a mighty hand clap in the name of Jesus now I want all of you to listen very carefully we're wrapping up let me have everyone's attention very very carefully now by the grace of God today the 15th 15th will be the final service for Zaria Koinonia after tonight, we're officially going on break from after this night. And we are going to be resuming next year with a combined service on the 21st of January. If you'll be alive, give Jesus a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. So 21st of January, by the grace of God, Zaria is here powerfully connecting Abuja and all our global expressions, connecting online, and on Sunday, we'll be wrapping up the service in Abuja. And officially, after tomorrow, we'll be having our meetings. Now, all, all heads of department, Zaria and Abuja, who are present, all ministers, and then all who came from Abuja, all who came, our team that came from Abuja, please, will be meeting at the office tomorrow, 7 on the dot in the morning at IDC. We'll have a time very quickly, and then officially, dismiss the leaders so please make sure that um you are readily available to receive whatever it is that um is available for you make sure that you connect in the course of our stay the break media is not going on break media department is going on break but media ministry is not going on break there is still receiving hallelujah and hopefully, who knows, it's possible that you have access to so many things that you could not hear 
meetings that I don't know what arrangement the media has, but you stay connected. This is for Zaria now, Koinonia Global, Koinonia Radio, Zaria, and so on and so forth. All the expressions. Make sure that you connect and make sure that you listen to these teachings. Practice everything. Obey the prophetic instructions that I have given you. And I assure you that by next year, when you return, basking in the prophetic word that God is going to be giving to us, you will never, never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me encourage you, keep in touch as a department, keep in touch as individuals, insist and ensure that you are connected. Thank God for social media. Hallelujah. You can learn together, pray together, grow together. And then God grants you great grace in Jesus' name. I want to specially appreciate our father who is here present, um, our daddy and mommy Tula. Thank you so much. I want to thank him because you can imagine at his age, him and mommy and they are here. You know, the weather is, is quite cold and yet he's here and standing even to the end of the service. And I also want to honor our father and our mother, Professor and Dr. Mrs. Onu. I was really touched seeing them, you know, in the weather and just receiving with all their heart. There is no one who has an excuse not to open up himself to receive. Hallelujah. Dr. Anointed, thank you too and your dear wife. Thank you for always being supportive, always being around. And I want us to give our Abuja family a big God bless you. Go ahead. From the worship team and all who have come. I was very touched and humbled seeing how many of them came just to come and spend the time and tomorrow they are rushing back again and then I want you to specially help me thank the entire leadership here in Zaria give them a big God bless you the heads of department they have done an incredible job hallelujah praise the name of the Lord amen and amen so um, after the grace the worship team, we could take a minute or two, celebrate. Perhaps we'll just take five minutes of praise or worship. Can we do that? Five minutes of praise just to thank the Lord. And then when we're done, as always, there are there buses, my people? Okay, so there's free bus transport to take all of you to your various stations. For those going to Congo and Shik, I'm sure that when you step out, a protocol officer will be glad to guide you. For all of you who will be traveling outside Zaria. I truly pray a very blessed and a safe journey for you. And I pray that you and your loved ones will truly have a very Merry Christmas. You know, we've forgotten that it's Christmas in a few days, really. Amazing, isn't it? Yes. Because for us, Christmas is not just a day. It is Jesus in our hearts, Jesus in our lives. And so every day is truly Christmas for us. For everyone who has received Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now before I speak the final blessing. I'm going to ask you to do something very quickly. The next one minute. I want you to walk around to at least 10 people. And tell them congratulations. For seeing the final service. Go ahead. Come on Koinonia Zaria. You can't, you can't be that cold. You can't be that cold. Congratulations. You made it finally. Congratulations. You do not need to know them. Have you gotten to 10? Hallelujah. Congratulations, you've seen the glory of God. Congratulations, help me. Done it for you. And you will come back with a new song to sing. We'll share the grace now and then let's allow our people blow up this roof in the next five minutes. Make sure you dance before you go. Are we together? Um, I don't know if they will allow you, but I'm, I'm sure they will allow you. I'm, I'm done, so maybe you can dance. Just 
make sure I know the dance that is David's dance. And I know the dance that is not David's dance. The only dance allowed here is David's dance. Hello? Are we together? I don't know what David danced, but I know the one that is not his dance. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so our children, now all our children, when we say children in Koinonia, don't say you. Children is from age zero to ten. Where do they meet? Welfare directs me. Where are our children going to? Okay, so all the children, please parents, let's not have children crying around because you stop them from eating. Once we share the grace, please parents, lead the children. There's a package, a special package for the children so that they can pick. All oh, my lovely children, please, you pick it. For the remaining, you have received spiritual blessings and that is the price you pay for being an adult. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we ready to share the grace? Thank you very much, Koinonia. Thank you for making this year of Open Doors a worthwhile experience. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise as a family of faith in Zaria. You have been faithful. You have shown us your mercy and we thank you. Thank you for this final service. Thank you for the instructions in righteousness, the impartation. Thank you for our global family connecting. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we wrap up Koinonia in Zaria, we pray that in the name of Jesus, the blessings continue, the transformation continues, the liftings continue in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you once again, and I pray that you will, your year will end with honor, and the year beginning will come with grace in the name of Jesus. Together, okay, now let me just say this. Thank you, I forgot. Now, as a ministry, we have what we call the end of year sacrifice. You know that. Um, I hesitated saying that here because we'll be doing that in um, Abuja. It is a culture we have practiced, <coughs> excuse me, as a ministry. And I want to encourage every one of you participate. Our end of year sacrifice is a ritual, well, not a ritual, a practice by a colonial global family where we give. We give sacrificially every year. We give every other time, but particularly at this point, I wanted to wait and announce it in Abuja, but I think it's important. Zaria, make sure you participate. Don't carry a beggarly mentality and say it's those who have money. That's a dangerous philosophy. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm sorry I didn't, I, I totally, you know, I, it was, I didn't even place it as a priority, but I love you too much to not. So what will happen is that you can use the account details from now until resumption. Agree with God on a sacrifice. Do it as a couple, do it as an individual, as a business person, whatever capacity, make sure you participate in this. Hallelujah. Okay, beautiful. The details are here. Make sure, send in your seats, and I'll do an official announcement on that on Sunday, but it is a practice. Make sure. Pray. Don't just give. Are we together? It's not about money. This is a ministry God has shown mercy. You know that by now. Are we together? So it is when we give, number one, it's a covenant responsibility by understanding. Number two, you are saying thank you to Jesus for his faithfulness all through the year. Number three, you are connecting with all the blessings that he has spoken concerning you and the ones that are to come. And then number four, you are just connecting with that which we have agreed upon as a ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So make sure that you take advantage of the account details now you can do it now or perhaps when you leave but just make sure between now and the resumption let it be from the depth of your heart every single one without exception make sure your seed and your sacrifice is part of this and i pray for you in advance that in the name of jesus whatever you are agreeing for especially financially may the god who has shown us mercy and helped us out of financial shame and reproach forever may he turn your life around and change your story in Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness and then we dance for five minutes. Rejoice and then we're done for the night. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance.
When you see me dance, I dance as a winner, man, yo.
Rago Jesus, Lama. 